was uh, the name Pancho was synonymous with the sport of tennis. I mean, he was the best. Uh, and obviously, he, he was somebody that I, I idolized. And then later on, uh, when I came to California to go to UCLA, uh, I actually spent a lot of time uh, with Pancho Gonzalez practicing. Uh, he became a mentor to me and a coach. And uh, he, uh, he really was somebody that had a great deal of influence on, on my uh, tennis career. Was there something about those uh, experiences with Pancho that kind of sticks out, like a piece of advice or an ex something experienced together with him? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, there's quite quite a few. Um, you know, I uh, we usually would go and practice either at the LA Tennis Club or at the Beverly Hills Tennis Club, and uh, there was one time um, I can tell you a couple stories, and if you don't mind, uh, okay. um, would love to hear them. Uh, well, the one story was uh, I get a f um, I, I was living in the dorms at UCLA, and uh, and there's a phone call in the in the hallway, uh, phone, the pay phone, the public phone, and, and from Pancho and and somebody said, Charlie, you, you know, Pancho Gonzalez is calling you on the phone. So I go over and talk to Pancho, and he said, Kid, he says, uh, L.A. Tennis Club uh, tomorrow at one o'clock. And I said, Pancho, I, I have a class at uh, at twelve noon. I said, you know, I may not make it there by one o'clock. And he says, Kid. One o'clock tomorrow at the LA Tennis Club. You know, I'm not gonna say no to Pancho, so I I arranged uh, for another student to take notes of the class, and I obviously was gonna miss class, and uh, so I I while well, I was arranging for the for the uh, student to take notes and everything, and go to, got to my car and everything. And make a long story short, I got to the LA Tennis Club, and it was about 1:15. I, I was late, and so immediately he says to me, "You're late." And I said, yeah, I'm sorry, Pancho, I had to arrange uh, somebody to take notes on that class for me, and, uh, and you know, I, I, but I'm here. He said, well, did you bring any tennis balls? And I said, oh, I forgot. You know, I said, I didn't know I was supposed to bring tennis balls. He said, well, just, that's okay. He says, go, go into the pro shop and, and get a couple cans of balls, and we'll play for the balls. And we start playing, and he is beating me badly. He wins the first set, and he's up like 5-2 in the second set. And, uh, and I'm, I'm struggling. And so he, he, st he stops the match. You know, he stops the play and says, here, let, let's work on your back and volley. And he starts giving me a back and volley lesson. He said, you've got to stiffen up your arm. You've got to be punch it a little bit more aggressive. And so he gives me about a 15-minute uh, lesson on my back and volley. Um, so then he said, okay, let's finish the match. And somehow I hold on to my serve, and it's 5-3. And then I break his serve, and it's 5-4. I hold on to my serve again. It's five all. Now he's really getting angry at himself. He says, you know, why do you start doing this? You lose concentration. He's, he's just muttering to himself all this stuff. And I end up winning the set to which he went ballistic. And he took all six balls. He hit them over the fence, uh, over Wilcox Avenue, never to be found again grabbed the stuff, slammed the gate of the tennis court open, sh you know, left the court, jumped into his GT Mustang that he had souped up, and you could hear him, you know, <laughs> driving away, <laughs> making all kinds of sounds, you know, as he drove away from the LA Tennis Club, and I, you know, I, I was still on the court there, and I said, well, I, I guess I'm going to have to pay for the balls because <laughs> even though I should, you know, should I call this a victory because he defaulted? But anyway, so that was typical Pancho. But, uh, uh, you know, it didn't take him but a few more days till he called me again and says, kid, you know, L.A. Tennis Club, one o'clock again. So this, you know, this was a typical type of things that you would experience with Pancho Gonzalez. Um, Another story about Pancho. Wait, was, before you go on, how did you do in the class? <laughs> sounds like you're. Sounds like you're leaving yeah, the class it was, a lot. Yeah, it was an anthropology class. It's amazing that I still remember. And I, yeah, I did fine. And uh, <laughs> what was your grade? <laughs> I don't remember the grade, but I did fine. I passed <laughs> anyway. Uh, so uh, we, uh, uh, you know, every time I would go play with Pancho, you know, then afterwards we, uh, you know, and then we would practice or something. Most of the time, not every time. We would sit down and, uh, you know, we would have a lemonade or an iced tea or, or, you know, Pancho would have a beer or whatever. And so uh, we would sit down and he would, I, I would ask him a lot of questions, you know. And so, you know, well, Pancho, when you were doing this, when you were doing it, and he would answer a lot of them. So, but, so at one point um, he would say to me, he says, okay, kid, he says, 
I'm only going to limit you to three questions today. You know, so, so one of the questions I asked him was, he said, I said, Pancho, well, what was that, that scar you have on your f face? How did you get that scar on your face? And he says, from asking too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stop anyway. this right now.